As expected yesterday, Apple released the public beta versions of iOS 16, iPadOS, macOS Ventura, watchOS 9, tvOS, and even a beta program for HomePod for the first time for the public. I installed them. How bad can it be? Want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. Before we get into today's content, don't forget that today and tomorrow are Amazon's Prime Day events, so if you're somehow not already a Prime member, you can try it for a month for free at iCaveDave.com forward slash Prime. That gets you access to all the Prime Day deals, supports my channel, as well as Amazon Prime Music and Prime Video, which means that you can watch the whole three series of The Boys for free. Flipping diabolical. Genuinely, it's the best thing on Amazon Prime. If you've not watched it yet, get on it. There have also been Mac Minis with M1 brand new from less than $570, which is an absolute steal. And I can vouch for the fact that you can run a whole YouTube channel from one of those, so that's pretty impressive. So, let's get on to the beaters. Of course, I installed them responsibly on all of my primary devices, including the iPhone 12 Pro Max that I film this show on every day, and the Mac Mini M1 over there, which I edit the show on. And my watch overnight, and this morning my iPad Air 4 as well. As a rule of thumb, it's not a great idea to install beta software, especially when that software is an operating system on hardware that you rely on to get your job done. Beta software can lead to instability, crashes, memory leaks, more heat generated, shorter battery life, and all kinds of fun stuff. However... How is it going for me? Well, it's going kind of boring. The biggest changes so far that I've seen are the new system settings on macOS, which admittedly looks much more organized than the previous version, the customizable lock screens on iPhone, which as expected feel very similar to Apple Watch customization, and different stats and colors on the Apple Watch walk workout screens, and how like Siri reads out your kilometer splits to you. So far I've run into zero bugs, errors, or apps that won't open, or any other nasties, and on the iPhone at least while it got a little bit warm immediately after the update, the battery consumption seems to be about back in line with usual, as it was on the previous version of iOS 15 that I had installed, although bear in mind that was also the public beta builds over on there too. It's just a lot further down in the process, and a lot more stable by now. Uh, now, I wrote all this script and there were zero bugs. However, I came to film this show and Filmic Pro, which I use for all of this, not happy at all with the beta version. So, uh, I tried restarting the app, but no, it's just kind of showing up in one little corner of the screen. Not quite sure what's going on there. But, this is what you expect with beta software. So, expect that third-party apps especially are less likely to be fully compatible at this point. This is expected issues. Don't worry about this. This is not any criticism, certainly, of Filmic Pro, who've done a crazy good job in the past, and uh, not criticism of Apple either. It's just saying, be aware that if you install beta versions, you are going to run into some issues. I also noticed that the cores on the Mac Mini were working pretty hard for the first couple of hours once I installed it, but as with many major updates, i.e. full annual versions, the system was probably re-indexing the drives, updating file systems, and doing general optimization and maintenance in the background. Of course, using a desktop Mac, I'm not really prone to the potential issues with battery problems, uh, that portable Macs would have, but at least in my so far short use of Mac OS Ventura, and in fact iOS 16, it seems to be pretty stable and not too buggy at all. I'll keep you posted on that of course, and if you're looking to update to uh, Ventura yourself, I'll walk you through how to do that in the video that I put out last night, as I did mine. So feel free to follow along with that one if you like, of course, this is all at your own risk, make your own backups, and your mileage may vary. If you are using the betas as well though, how is it going for you? And if not, uh, what would you like to see more of in terms of testing, guides, and the like? Let me know in the comments where you can also ask a question with the hashtag iCaveAnswers so that I can answer them like these very attractive people already have. First up, Ron Matheson asks, iCaveAnswers, I keep looking at your Harman Kardon speakers with envy. What are your favourite speakers right now? So yeah, I've got the sound sticks hanging out at the back there. You actually can't see one of them as well as you normally would because uh, Project 91 is sitting over there. You can also see that the keyboard is done. We've got a video. Uh, well, we'll have a lot of videos coming up for Project 91 because that's going to be a very important part of what the channel does going forward. I love bits of retro tech and um, this is looking really sweet. Uh, but yeah, the Harman Kardon speakers, I've got another setup in the attic, which are the first generation. Those were like USB um, attachment only because they originally came out around the same time as the G4 Cube. Uh, this is the second generation, this is the Sound 6 II, which is headphone jack and you get capacitive touch uh, volume controls on the left sound stick. It's on one of the sound sticks on my desk, it's on the left anyway. Maybe I have my 
stereo backwards. But yeah, these things still sound really good. Um, there is a little bit of connection issue on one of the satellite speakers, so it's a little bit intermittent, but I, I think we've resolved that. I think maybe a little bit of a, a connection in one of the cables, but um, yeah, they still sound awesome. Um, yeah. Really good. Randomness R asks, I gave answers, did you order the M2 MacBook Airs? I got two of them to test out. Man, if these were 15 inch, I would have kept them and bought two more for my family. Now I've got to wait until spring 2023. Oh, we're assuming spring 2023. That's when we think we might see the 15 inch. That is not a guarantee, remember? So um, the other thing that kind of concerns me is if they do come out in spring 2023 and they put M2 in there, I don't see them putting M2 Pro into a MacBook Air regardless of the rumors that have come out so far. I'll kind of believe that when I see it or if we get some more reliable kind of corroboration of that. But uh, I do think that's gonna be M2 only. If it's gonna be fanless, I don't think you're gonna be able to cool uh, any of the Pro chips without a fan. So just take that as uh, as you will. M2 Air, be testing it. Um, may not be staying it's one of those things that uh, i might do what all of the other testers do and just have it for a couple of weeks and send it back um but it depends what we're doing budget wise i guess uh, i'm really trying to get everything in line but right now money is a big issue for me please join patreon icavedave.com forward slash patreon randomness asks icave answers nice video on the apple watch 10 i really hope it gets the figure 47 millimeters at the very least or i'd be really disappointed i'm really hoping 48 millimeters with a better battery life what are the chances of that happening my good sir the chances of that happening are not any at all because we know what the supply chain has uh, and it's 1.99 inches for that display that's a diagonal display size which is 50 point five five millimeters which when you convert that into a case size is 47 millimeters it's 46.98 i believe it came out to so yeah 47 mil that's the size of the case for this as far as we can tell unless apple does something crazy with the design they might even call the design still 45 millimeters because because the case isn't going to bulge out in the way that the current one does so watch this space maybe that's 45 millimeters for that pro watch but you're just squeezing in a bigger display interesting thoughts randomness are i cave answers i have a second gen apple television sitting around and today i used it for screen mirroring and airplay it's awesome it does glitch here and there do you think i should upgrade or wait i also don't have strong wi-fi at my current house as i live in a rural area with two acres of land but the house is going to be completed soon where i don't have any more wi-fi issues what do you think is wi-fi causing it to lag sometimes when i screen mirror the movie that plays is fine on my laptop but it will just give me a black screen, the audio and subtitles keep working, it's strange. So what I would say is second generation Apple TV, that was only the 720p one, right, from memory, so that is also gonna have, I think it's got an A5 inside, maybe? It's very, very early on. Uh, that one got discontinued way back. However, the second generation, if that is what you've got, was the only one that was ever able to be jailbroken as well. Might be worth looking into because I have a weird feeling that it gave you access to um, quite a lot of content when that happened. That's probably been patched at this point, but the prices for the second gens went absolutely sky high. The third gen was the first 1080p one. What I would say though, is if you are um, having issues with AirPlay, try ethernet. Like I'm pretty sure they have an ethernet port on the back, even back that far. So you might find that uh, doing it over a wired network instead of uh, Wi-Fi might work a lot better for you. Randomness are IK Vance is still on waiting on news of the AirPods Max 2. The rumor mill is only talking about the Pro 2. Can you do some digging? Thanks. So uh, on the on, on the Max 2, we basically had one rumor that they might be updating them this year as well. And that rumor basically said it might get a new color and that was about it. So I'm honestly not expecting a major update to these. I would be surprised if it's more than a color if they even do that. So think of it along the lines of when they updated the HomePod minis from being black and white to being five colors plus black and white. That's the kind of update we're looking at. I don't think there's going to be any hardware changes inside at this point, um, especially if the chips inside can get a firmware update and then be able to run that spatial and lossless audio codec that we've heard about for the AirPods Pro 2. Uh, I do think that the AirPods Max are a great product, but I also said from quite a while ago, it looks like a three year upgrade cycle for headphones, which is absolutely fine because there are not huge leaps in the headphone market in the same way that we get with iPhones and with Macs and with other stuff. I actually 
I'm getting to the point where I think that maybe the Apple Watch doesn't need to be on an annual upgrade cycle because it seems like this is going to be the third year that we actually get the same chip inside. And then I'm wondering, actually, is that same chip that we're hearing about actually going to go into the main line of the Apple Watch? And maybe the Pro Apple Watch does get a faster chip, just like we're going to see with the Pro iPhones this year. That might be the other way that they differentiate. And all that's being seen in the supply chain at this point is that we've got those chips being used again. A little bit of a, a offshoot, but bear in mind as well that the HomePods use an Apple Watch chip. Inside they use the S5 chip, I believe, in the HomePod Mini. It wouldn't be a million miles away from plausible to say that the AirPods Max might also get those Apple Watch chips. We know that they're very efficient. We know that you're not going to be running anything else other than audio through these things. So there's a little amplifier in there, a little bit of wireless tech, and uh, you've got room to put bigger batteries in them. So... That could make sense. But that's it. I think we are probably going to be seeing more in terms of colors with these than anything else. So thank you so much for watching again, guys. If you want to join the Patreons over here at patreon.com forward slash iCaveDave or iCaveDave.com forward slash Patreon. And if you do need that Prime membership, don't forget iCaveDave forward slash Prime. iCaveDave.com forward slash Prime. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.